Hi, I'm Damien Wells from NXP. Welcome to Embedded World. We'd love to show you some of the really cool demos that we've got going here on the booth today. Hey, Kyle. Hey. Can you tell us, gentlemen, what we have here on, the, on this particular demo area? Sure, absolutely. Uh, welcome. So at NXP, uh, we're showcasing our microcontrollers in this display. Uh, to start, we have our 1170, uh, the crossover microcontrollers. This is a uh, voice recognition example where I can say, hey oven, and hey oven, shut the door, and it will close the oven door. Hey oven, shut the door. All right. All right. So it's always listening, it's for voice applications. Yes. Uh, this does uh, uh, some vision where it can recognize gestures, start some audio, or you can close the audio, or you can use the touch, uh, both uh, showing the human machine interface and the vision and the audio detection. What is a chip that can, does, that can do this? Yeah, that is the uh, IMX RT1170. It's a uh, dual core, high performance uh, crossover MCU from NXP. It has an M7 and an M4. In this case, we're actually using both cores. The M4 is using uh, more for the human machine interface and some of the general activity, uh, isolating all the complex uh, voice and vision on the M7. And you're launching a new chip here at the, sh at the show. Yeah, so uh, NXP is uh, showing a lot of uh, applications and use cases for the MCX. It's our newest microcontroller. It's a dual core Cortex M33 device. We have a demonstration here which is showing the human machine interface with our free to use GUI guider software tool to create rich uh, user interfaces to drive uh, interaction with the customer. And so dual core M33. Yes. It's good performance for this kind of applications? Absolutely, it's uh, up to 150 megahertz per core, but it also has a graphics accelerator, it has a DSP, and it has a neural network application uh, for machine learning. How do you do the ne neural networking on the MCU? So what it has is it has that, uh, it's an NXP neural network core called the Neutron, and we use our EIQ software to uh, train and learn uh, the different machine learning algorithms. And we download it to that microcontroller, but it offloads all the machine learning to that uh, assist neural network. And it's part of the core, it's part of the it's chip. It's part of the same chip, along with the two dual core Cortex M3s and the hardware accelerator for graphics. And what are you showing here in the laptop? So I'm excited to present the Visual Studio Code expen expansion or extension. It's called MCU Expresso for VS Code. We've gotten lots of requests from customers to provide another option uh, for development to complement our IAR, Microvision, and Eclipse-based tools. So now customers can use the uh, Visual Studio Code environment to get started developing with NXP libraries as well as a Zephyr development. All right. Uh, so it's busy at your booth? A lot of people asking about these new chips? A lot of people are excited about both the Vision applications on the RT1170 and also the MCX and the new microcontroller that NXP is providing customers. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, it was nice meeting you. Thanks. Nice. Hi, let me right. take you now over to our Matter demo that we have running over here um, as part of our smart home demonstration area. So Michael, could you uh, explain what we have here in terms of our Matter demo? All right. Yes. Uh, so this is our Matter demo. So this is for the smart home and IoT. The idea of, th of this demo is really to demonstrate the interoperability of this new standard. So we are talking here about a new standard, a new common language on the IoT uh, markets. And uh, NXP is a great contributor of this new protocol and we are offering a new platform, complete solution, hardware and software so that you can develop uh, matter devices. So our broad portfolio helps us to uh, provide solutions for gateway and matter controller and thread border router, but we are also providing solutions for matter and device of a thread and also matter and device of a Wi Fi. So, and then there's a controller which is just Android. So, yeah, on this demo, we are, what we are trying to show is we have several controls. So, we have this Android matter controller, but we have also an embedded 
Matter controller, which is available on this demo. What is running here? So here is running so the Matter controller and the thread border router, but you can also control some of the end device if I just walk through here and then you can see that we can control this smart lock and fan directly. But also, which is a key point here, we have also on this demo third-party controller with a iPod from Apple and a Nest from Google, and this controller are also matter compatible. And what you can just say is, hey Google, turn on the light. Hey Siri, and then if I say, hey Siri, turn off the light. So as you can see, then you can show that whatever the ecosystem, at, as it is matter compatible, you can drive all your device in your smart home. It's very popular to, to work on the matter right now? Yes, that's really, this is a very beginning of matter, but uh, we see a, a lot of adoption, it becomes very popular, a lot of buzz around that, but that's for real now and it's, it will expand and, and we for sure see a lot There's of- There's a lot of promise? In matter. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the price of matter. Yeah. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right. Let me take you now over to our uh, UWB ultra wideband demo and show you some of that cool technology in action. Hey, Lloyd, do you want to explain what's going on here with uh, with UWB in the demo? Yeah, of course. So UWB is a radio frequency technology which allows us to range very, very accurately. We can range 10, plus minus 10 centimeters and uh, at, at an angle resolution of plus minus 3 degrees. That's also what we're showing here. I have a smartphone from uh, Samsung, just a normal smartphone with an app for auto wideband and an auto wideband chip in there. And I have a, an, uh, another auto wideband device based on the SL160 uh, from NXP. Uh, in in there and it's on top of the bezel it's two antennas and if we step back I can move the, uh, the smartphone around and on top there you can see the ang angle change in relation to why I'm holding the phone in front of the uh, front of the uh, laptop also the distance changes if I'm if I move back at, um, uh, the distance changes and if I move it more uh, further uh, in again, it's again closed distance. And what we're showing here with this demo is seamless logical access. So I'll just turn it on and imagine you're working, uh, working on, your, on your laptop uh, and you just move away and you forgot to lock it. And because I am connected via my smartphone with auto wideband to my laptop, it's locked. And now if I go back, go back in uh, to my laptop and want to, want to continue my work, it's locked again, uh, unlocked again. So, so this is showing the seamless logical access for, with auto wideband. And another thing is, what happens if you forget your smartphone? Because if you forget your smartphone, you only move away. And if you move behind the white line, um, then it's still unlocked. But because what we're showing with the with this demo with the SL160 trimension is uh, that we can do auto wideband radar and. Uh, and, um, and uh, distant information at the same time. I want to ask them to step back. All right. And, and then. So now I step back from my laptop, and as soon as, it, as the laptop did, does not detect my presence anymore with auto wideband, it will lock it um, because there's no one there. It's locked for security reasons. And now if I go back, it does detect my presence again, but it does not, of course, know that I am the person that is allowed to use this laptop. So I need to put in a pin again. And yeah, this is just the amazing. As long as somebody is near the laptop, it's unlocked. It's yeah. Yeah, you have to prove yourself that you're that you're the person who is allowed to use the laptop. So so it senses people. Um, with auto wave and radar, we can sense presence. Yes. Presence. Yes. And all these uh, support that. Um, yeah, exactly. We have we have the uh, TriMension SL150 with the module partners Amotech, Murata, SGI, Sunway, and we also have uh, using the uh, uh, SL150 uh, development kits, which can all, all do ultra wideband uh, distance measurements, uh, and the, we also have the SL160, which is a more radar optimized chip. All right. Yeah. Cool. Thanks yeah. a lot. No problem. Have a nice day. Enjoy okay. the show. Cool. Hey, so we're gonna go now and take a look at our uh, high voltage uh, battery management system demo here with Andreas who will uh, explain how that is uh, and what it's, how it's working.
Hi. Hi. It's my pleasure to explain you our high voltage BMS reference design, the cloud connected BMS reference design. So this is what we call the high voltage 400 volt reference design with the main board, with the microcontroller and the, the intelligence, let's say, the, the software stacks. This on that side is the cell controller, cell monitoring. So each of these small little guys here control and monitor 14 battery cells. And then on that side, we have the high power rail, the, uh, the shunt, and then there's high current measurement. And uh, for redundancy reasons, for safety, functional safety reasons, it's a uh, dual of them. So all of that is we provide to our customers for prototype building, together with software stacks and functional safety analysis. And then this demo is actually more, is one part of it. The other part is that we partner with the company Electra Vehicles Inc. It's actually a demo of two companies. And I have here my friend Fabrizio, the CEO Hello, of Electra everyone. Vehicles Inc. And he is doing the cloud and will explain to you the cloud. Business. Exactly, yes. What we have done uh, with uh, in the partnership with NXP, we have demonstrated the ability to connect to the cloud and, uh, and leverage uh, some of not only the edge computing power of NXP chipset, in particular that's 32K3 chipset here, but we're also able to connect to the cloud and leverage uh, an advanced digital twin of the batteries. So what is a digital twin? It's basically a copy, an exact copy of the battery, but uh, in the cloud. And what we do at Electra, we basically create a digital twin with the physics base, so actual data coming out from uh, the battery itself, and machine learning. So we leverage a lot of the latest techniques of uh, machine learning AI in order to have a very accurate digital twin of, of your batteries. And what we do is basically, when there is an error uh, that starts to give some uh, problems to the state of charge or state of health, uh, on board, we're basically pinging the cloud and say, is there a new update, is there a firmware update in order to download it and uh, reduce that error, make this error disappear. The opportunity is that we are gonna have, uh, with electric vehicles, very accurate state of charge, so we know how many miles, how many kilometers we have left in our vehicles, but also the ability to have a very good state of health, so we know if the battery is healthy or not. And uh, finally, we can predict potential failures up to three months in advance if our batteries will go well or not. So we are showcasing here uh, the partnership with NXP and Electra for a very advanced, very novel BMS solutions. Because uh, the batteries can be, they're, they're very advanced, it's keep coming new batteries all the time and uh, it's very important to manage how fast you charge, how fast you use it on the road and it's, it's complicated system, right? Absolutely, yeah. Batteries are alive systems, are very complicated and what we are seeing is that there are new batteries coming out, you know, uh, uh, NMC 811 uh, or uh, the novel. What is that uh, one? Which one? What is this you just said? M so, yeah, there are different chemistries. You know, the, the popular one by yeah. Tesla is uh, NCA. There are many from the Chinese market, LFP and so on. But uh, there are new trends like NMC 811. They are very advanced uh, 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 chemistries as well as the lithium metal, solid state. Uh, potentially in the future we'll see lithium air. And it's very important to do a digital twin of the battery in order to have uh, uh, the ability to know the battery itself and be able to deploy advanced algorithm to make any chemistry working well. It's like simulation, emulation, something? Yes, exactly. You basically create a digital twin, so a copy, a digital copy of your battery. But in order to do that, you need to do a lot of tests, a lot of machine learning. But once you have that model, you can do a lot of things and you so can leverage the network effect. The battery is the most expensive part in an electric vehicle, so you want to maintain that over a long lifetime. And of course, you also want to get the maximum distance out of your vehicle. So that's why you need to have very precise algorithms and the digital twin helps you to get these really precise. One thing I want to see, but I don't know if the car makers want to do it, is battery swap and that there should be a standard uh, and everybody should swap the batteries. But that will mean there will be a million different batteries out there and each of them different different health, different range, different, but that's a different question of it. It's a different question. There's companies out there that tried that in the past. There's also companies out there that tried that now. Um, but it is like you say, I mean, battery car, vehicle manufacturers have own ideas about their batteries. So they don't want one unique battery. They want different performance levels for their cars. What do you it's, think? It's a differentiation point. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Andreas uh, that we're going to see, there have been several battery swap in the past. Uh, we're going to continue to see more and more. Uh, it's definitely, we need more normalization. We need more uh, rules around the batteries. But for now, it's a very early in the industry. And uh, we're going to see a lot of uh, differentiation, diversities. But we might get there. It just takes uh, 20, 30, 40 years of time or so. I don't want to wait so long. I know. I want it in two or three months. Yeah. Oh, I see. You want to swap?
swap two, the batteries two or three years, quick. okay. <laughs> I see, okay. Yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. I think the European car makers need to, to, to move fast and do something. I don't know. I don't know what's happening exactly. <laughs> Sure, but it's a very complex matter, and that's why there are companies like NXP, Electra, many other players in the industry try to push uh, electrification forward, uh, make sure the battery is safe, uh, and they give you the miles and the mileage that everybody wants. Uh, the battery swap uh, potentially will come; it will take will take some time, not two, three months. Okay, cool. Thank All you. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. So let's go take a look at uh, another one of our demos that we have here on the booth, which is um, our concept uh, e-scooter. Nice. So here we have uh, basically a representation of uh, an e-scooter, um, obviously made out of Plexi, and we've actually positioned within it um, many of the different building blocks that NXP could provide to someone who was uh, wanting to design an e-scooter um, for, for themselves. This is just a whole bunch of NXP chips that goes in a scooter exactly. all over the place. Um, it's actually combined together with uh, a story that is actually running on a screen that's uh, just off to our right-hand side here. Um, and this actually talks about the e-scooter itself in terms of future mobility. We can drive into more technical details around the display connectivity controller, the onboard charger, traction inverter, the battery management system, and indeed we can even drill down to the individual parts that NXP provide that actually could be used uh, within each of these applications. Nice. So very visual, it tends to draw lots of people in who are potentially looking at designing products within that um, area. Nice, I see a uh chip down here for the tire pressure, the radar on the back, onboard charger, just a whole bunch. Cool. All right. You have your, uh, your BMS here uh, for the battery management system, the electronics for a handlebar control. We have a display up here, which is being driven by a display controller that sits in the front of the bike. And of course, forward facing radar as well. Is there a trend of trying to put more and more stuff in less fewer chips somehow? That can uh, do more? For sure there is. Um, obviously everyone is trying to reduce down essentially uh, the amount of electronics that you would put into something like this. Um, but they all have pretty dedicated functions as well. So, you know, the BMS is very much uh, its own separate entity and you've already heard about that a little bit on the high voltage one for the cars over there. Nice. Can I take you also over to the partner wall that we have here on the yes. booth? Cool. All right. Because NXP has a lot of partners in the embedded world. N NXP has somewhere in the region of about 250 to 300 partners in total. And they um, might all exhibit here at the show. Yes, many, many of them are. We have actually, within the show, we have over 100 demonstrations that are not on our booth, they are elsewhere. We have a sample here on this wall of um, 24 of our demos. This particular side of the wall, uh, we have a brand new device called the IDA MX-93 that launches next month. And this entire side of the wall is actually all of our embedded board suppliers who make these little modules. Um, and they are basically, all of them are based on the IDA MX-93 ready for the part to be launched. So here we see Advantech doing uh, Pritech. Uh, so even though it's a new chip, they've been working with you for a while to make it make it ready for the market? We engage them in the alpha yeah. program, so very early on, yeah. um, when we were also engaging with our very big OEMs. Uh, and by engaging them at that point, they're actually able to develop a module in time for when the product reaches full market launch. And they, uh, your partners covered all requirements of the market, what people want, like all the different segments, the, yes. the demand yes. is covered. There's a solution for everything. Yes. And then more and more coming. So what's the performance of the IMX93? That's a high high performance core, right? It is a high performance core, yes. It also has uh, on board um, an ML engine as well to obviously help with uh, offloading. The it core. says uh, one or two Cortex A55 yep. plus the M33. Yep, for real time. And then actually on... When we look at this side of the wall, this is a, another selection of our partners. Um, the four that are here are actually um, all HMI, so this is more graphics um, and the ability to develop a GUI. You know, um, and then further along the wall, we have some of our Wi-Fi partners and indeed some of our automotive partners as well. Uh, so when there's a new IMX coming, it's a big deal industry the uh, world, right? it is very much a big deal we don't just have IMX on this side of the wall we also have some of our microcontrollers some of our network processes as well and indeed some of our automotive products so this is one of our automotive products the green box and indeed the new part that another new part that was launched at the show was the s32 g3 
um, and this particular partner has already got a board out um, based upon the S32 G3. And the S32 G3 um, is computer vision stuff? It is for the automotive domain. All right. Here's a big that's, SOM. Yeah, that's um, Ida MX 8M Plus um, as a SOM module. All right. All right. So it's been a busy, busy show. It's been a very busy show, uh, particularly uh, the first two days. Today, obviously, uh, it's a little bit quieter. There's a few more students here, which is great to see some young talent coming through, learning about the technology that we have on offer. Yeah. Uh, so you also talk here about uh, automotive. You, 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 maybe you can introduce. Certainly. Let me introduce Brian Carlson, my colleague here, who uh, who knows all about our automotive products and what we have. Brian. Sure. Hi. Hi. So I don't know. I just walked up and saw you here. Yeah. Great to see you again. So. Um, have you seen anything yet? And I don't know. Yeah, if you've we, we did the, the booth, booth tour. So you've so seen the automotive what? booth? Not, not the automotive table, but yeah, the let's go over there. Automotive table. Oh, definitely. Well, I yeah. see that. You, did, you saw the automotive partner. We sure did. Perfect. Sure. Perfect. Okay. Let's go over there because there's a lot of yeah. exciting things going on in automotive. Definitely, okay. right? We know about electrification, uh, connected vehicles, autonomous vehicles, and everything's moving towards software-defined vehicles. So that's what we're really focused on here. So let me just give you the rundown. We have. Yeah. So we'll start Sorry. here. Electrification, of course, is a, a big trend. Uh, OEMs are spending $20, $30 billion a piece to create uh, electrification platforms. And so we're right in the mix with battery management, uh, onboard charging. This is for the actual uh, drive of the EV. So we introduced this product initially uh, in um, Munich back at Electronic in November. This is the actual chip right here. That's the S32 K39. The nice thing about that is it's an ASIL D rated chip that allow that includes a lockstep pair of Cortex M7s, two additional M7s, uh, but it has a lot of integration. It has Sigma Deltas. It has really high resolution, uh, peak resolution of uh, pulse width modulation to control gate drivers. But what's really good about it with the uh, it has two dedicated motor control coprocessors. This allows us to control uh, very high speed uh, uh, inverters, which we take the 800 volt, typically 400, 800 volt battery voltage. We have gate drivers that we introduced also recently called the GD 3162s. And we're able to switch those uh, to be able to, to, to do a whole control loop uh, up to 200 kilohertz for two motors. So this chip, why it's so impressive is being able to drive two electric motors uh, at the same time, totally independently, uh, and then we can extend that with the S32 Z and E, which have eight gigahertz, one gigahertz um, Cortex R52 cores, which is what we don't show the part here. Just visually, we we, we actually won best at show at, at this at this show, Embedded World, back in June of last year with the S32 E, and it has um, you know eight, like, as I mentioned, uh, R52 cores running at gigahertz. It's kind of the brain of the EV. This is the brain of the electric motor, and it's just optimized for efficiency. We can port, uh, support SIC, SIC, or future gallium nitride. Uh, so it's about high performance uh, electric motor control, the ability to scale from uh, all the way up to four motors for a four wheel drive EV. Uh, and we have the ability to show visualization of what's going on, on the chip. So this is a really exciting uh, device for us. There's, this has been probably one of our most uh, attended demos here. Uh, what we announced this week, though, is the production launch of the S32 G3. Now, this is a really exciting processor. It actually has 30 processors inside, 21 ARM cores, uh, and it allows us to combine M cores with A53 cores, uh, lockstep support for these, which allows us to do uh, ASIL-D safety applications. So the two key applications we see for this are the vehicle computer in the new software-defined vehicles. Uh, this is actually uh, being used in production vehicles today. Uh, we just opened it up so anyone uh, through distribution has access to this technology now through through distributors. This is the, uh, the RDB or reference design board, uh, schematics, layout, uh, bomb. Everything's included and provided on NXP.com. You can get these boards. And the Gold Box, which is the enclosed version of this, is really popular. 
Um, so this has this board actually has 18 CAN-FD interfaces, 12, gig, uh, 12 Ethernet interfaces up to 2.5 gigabits. Uh, it has two M.2 modules here, so we support Halo 8, which is like 26, 27 tops of um, ML. We can support a terabyte SSD uh, or uh, a Wi-Fi 6. So these are really popular as a PCI Express slot here. Uh, so it's extensible uh, SD card. This is a very, very popular product, and you see a lot of gold boxes on the floor um, at Partners. They leverage this for a lot of their demonstrations. And, actually use this. and Tier 1s use it in cars to actually drive and do testing of their software with this platform. So this is in production. The big thing here that we're showcasing is the integration of Kubernetes. Uh, we have a product called Gold VIP. It's available on NXP.com. It allows you to put this whole stack with dual Linux, uh, dual Linux running. It has uh, Zen, a hypervisor, and support for Kubernetes K3S. And so what we're really showing here is uh, multiple workloads, uh, containers running on this board. And this is Grafana. We also have Prometheus for event monitoring. But all of that is running on this board. And you can log in through a web browser and actually monitor all these tasks and manage containers in an automotive software-defined vehicle environment uh, with this product. And this is just the, the tip. You know, There's a lot of um, exciting applications that will be coming to vehicles. This has isolation that allows people to put new applications on it very easily. So software-defined vehicles are a really key turning point in automotive to, to progress into more like smartphones and data centers and be able to deploy workloads very easily onto the chip. So it works? The, the whole idea of software-defined vehicles in the future, you buy an EV, yeah. it just keeps getting better. That's the point I always say, right? The, the worst your car is ever going to be is when you buy it. And it actually gets better over time. We flip the model on, on its head. Uh, so we do this in all these areas. The motor control, we, we talk about a software-defined motor. We're showing over here the intelligent battery management. We'll see that in a second where we're continually updating the machine learning models and improving the rate, getting very, very accurate range uh, and also extending the life of battery 12 to 15%. So just through software and algorithms and machine learning in the cloud, digital twins in the cloud, we're able to combine vehicle data in the cloud and to deploy. And there's the whole development side of this SDB and we're supporting virtualization of the processors in the cloud. So you can actually develop your software in the cloud, uh, do all the testing integration, and then deploy it back to the vehicle through over-the-air updates. And even the Gold VIP has the, the ability to support over-the-air updates of uh, virtual machines, the complete real-time system, or the complete image. You have a lot of flexibility and really advanced over-the-air updates with end -end security. This comes with an integrated, basically an integrated secure element. Uh, it allows you to do all the public key infrastructure. So it has leading edge security, leveraging the technology from NXP, because we're in secure, you know, uh, bank cards, passports, uh, and leveraging the enterprise networking capabilities. It really brings NXP's expertise all into one, one chip. So this is, this is uh, being deployed uh, by many OEMs. Uh, the initial vehicles actually came out um, in, in China, Li Auto, uh, they're already in production of vehicles, and there's a lot of uh, global OEMs that'll be putting vehicles out through this year and next year. So it's the start of the SDV. You know, there's a whole bunch of things going on around it, like zonal architecture and how you address each of the zones. Uh, and, and getting rid of a bunch of boxes and integrating those is virtually easy using a box. So we're doing that too. Uh, that's what we showed last year uh, with the S32Z and S32E, which are more zonal architecture chips. That's when you define on software, yeah. it's great, uh, but you also sell hardware. So do you, do you want do you want the cars to be able to swap out the board when there's a new chip in the future? Well, that's the key thing about this. I should. That's a, glad you asked about that because we talked we talked about SDV, we talked about the board and reference. The, the other key message we're talking about here is scalability because this part extends our our S32G family. We have the S32G2, which has been in production since May of 2021. What this does, those are four devices. Now we've taken uh, that family forward with the G3. It doesn't supersede it, it actually augments and extends that family. So now we have four new devices. So what we're seeing is we actually have the low-end device of the G2, which is a microcontroller only with three lockstep M7 cores. Uh, and it goes all the way up to this that has the full complement uh, of, uh, of eight A53 cores and uh, eight, which are four lockstep pairs of M7 cores. So what happens is we have customers that start at the low end, even the microcontroller version, 
um, and they're able to, over the life of the vehicle, to swap out or to increase performance. So if they're doing a certain capability, they can make that smarter, more intelligent over time. So year to year, they may decide, they keep the same architecture, they keep the same box. But this is pin for pin compatible. So all those G2 devices, G3 devices, you can start to add those up over time. And within a, like within a fleet, you may have low end and high end. You could have different versions of the same chip, footprint compatible, but different cost and performance points or you can extend it in the future to add more capability. Maybe three, four years in the future, I drive in somewhere, yeah, the and upgrade. somebody swaps all my boards, yeah, yeah. and then I have the next version of the hardware. So we're but seeing... the software continues. Exactly, and that's where software-defined vehicle allows you to do that, because today you may, you may have to replace 16 boxes in the car, which is never going to happen, where you could put one chip or one module and replace that out and double the performance like that. So uh, that's the big advantage, and that's what's new. It's the modularity, because a lot of these, like this, capability would be part of a module inside of a, of a central computer with infotainment and IVI, uh, or IVI and uh, ADAS in a, like one central box. And this is the main vehicle computer that works with that. And it's modular typically. So you could upgrade those over time. When, when people want to optimize the range and the efficiency of the motors yes, and the exactly. regeneration and everything, and you involved in helping them make that better all the time? Exactly. Uh, we have, and we work with a lot of partners, and we'll show that here with Electra as one of our examples. Yeah, we interviewed them just before. Oh, okay. So, batteries. so you've already done that one. Yeah. That's good. Okay, so that's a great example of how you can leverage the vehicle data, and the, um, the game changer here is the edge processing. To be able to do this real time, continually, every time the car's running, They'll monitor everything that's going on in the car. That data is really important. Uh, we've partnered with cloud partners like AWS, for example, so we support AO AWS IoT Fleetwise, so we can actually ch also trigger on certain events. So if there's certain events going on in the car, like a hard braking event or some kind of failure, we can actually capture that intelligently at the edge, bring that to the cloud, and they can process it across, across a fleet. So that's where all this data is converged at the cloud. They are able to process it, understand how to improve it, and then they update the models. Just like Electra probably told you, they update the models on the vehicle and now it gets better over time. Whether it's the efficiency of the motor, the, 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 the drive, uh, or it's the efficiency of the battery, or the charging algorithm may be improved. Especially, uh, you know, you want to improve the algorithm so you're not stressing the battery during charging, so that could be improved. There's a lot of opportunity in electrification to make these things longer, better, uh, and last longer. In, um, in, in EVs, there's this pretty much like supercomputers. Like, that's what it is. They have this big, is a supercomputer. Big performance. Yes. And there's also a whole bunch of other processors around, right? Little processors. But you go and or, yeah. You target different clock. Yeah. Places. So we optimize. We optimize the solution. Like this is M7 based. This is uh, you know Cortex A53. Um, those are Cortex R cores in, in electrification. So what we do is we target the appropriate ARM cores for the application, right? And I used to always call it the, the right core for the chore, right? It's like you want the best, if it's very deterministic and all that, if you need high performance, you, you know, you select the right core. Uh, the last thing I'd say here is the uh, orange box, which we introduced in uh, last, last year at uh, Detroit Tech Days. Uh, so this actually is really interesting because it's like a uh, con connectivity domain controller in a way where all the connectivity in the vehicle, so if you look at this, GNSS for positioning, gyro, digital radio, uh, V2X, even the audio, the radio, um, we have a secure element built into this, accelerometer, Wi-Fi 6, and 5G. I mean, anything that's wireless, Bluetooth, low energy, ultra wideband, all of that converged into one box. So you, now you can do coexistence. There's a lot of opportunities for doing uh, some innovative things with the wireless technologies. Uh, this has an IDM X8 XL processor in there. Uh, we'll upgrade that over the time with new processors. And we're showing here some of the things with Bluetooth low energy connection, Wi-Fi. Um, this is a digital radio coming in and we're actually driving the radio from the centralized connectivity domain controller. So now you don't have to uh, run all of that to the, the radio here. It's all done digitally through an ethernet connection. Uh, and then we're showing here a Qi wireless power and communication through Bluetooth low energy also and Wi-Fi with the phone. So that would go in the car? Yeah, well, not this box. This is a reference night, just to be clear about that, because when I first saw it, I said, that's a pretty big box. But uh, what this is is a modular. This is more of a development platform where the, the, this is an, an actual reference design. Uh, so there's a difference between what's intended to go in cars versus what's more of showing what you can do, and this has a lot of modules. So what's really important with this box is that you know wireless technology keeps changing over time. So for development purposes, this allows the customers to rapidly move and prototype 
with different types of modules over time. So it's more in a larger form factor to support modularity and such, so that's why it's big. Uh, typically this would be a much smaller, but these are modules a lot inside right now today. Um, but this is a great demo because it shows how everything comes from the wireless through this unit, driving the display with information uh, through the Bluetooth, and a central point for the wireless connectivity and the Wi-Fi and, and everything, right? Cool. It's all right there, which brings a lot of value. I think you saw right. the you saw yeah. the battery and management the yeah. AI. And the last thing here, did you see the scooter yet? Yeah, we saw that one so too. So the yeah. key thing on the message from my perspective on the scooter is that all this great technology that we're developing for the automobile, whether it's the radar, the electrification, the control, the communication, the display board, all of that can be resized and repurposed into other types of e electric vehicles, right? And so work with motorcycle vendors, scooter vendors, uh, even like robotic, electric robotic delivery type vehicles, this technology can really span across a lot of applications. Cool, yeah. thanks a lot. Great to That's see awesome. you again. Okay, All right, nice take care. All right. All right. So there you go, that's a, a, a bit of a tour around the NXP booth showing you some of the great technology that we actually have uh, to show to our customers here at the show and uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks.